Can I get you a snack? Uh, what? On a private plane, a passenger is suddenly startled by a disoriented man stumbling through the aisles. The passenger panics, immediately alerting the others, claiming the man woke up sooner than he was supposed to. One of the fellow passengers calms the confused man, telling him he's a doctor and he can help him. He proceeds to stab the man in the throat with a pen, explaining to the others that they can't risk having him tell other people what he's seen. The man is miraculously still alive and still stammering around the plane, bleeding heavily. The passengers continue to panic until a woman enters the cockpit and stabs the man in the eye with a high heel. They drag the murdered man back to a secluded room where another woman is shown lying unconscious. The same unconscious woman is shown later, awakening in the middle of a forest with a restraint in her mouth. She sees another woman at a nearby river. She calls out to the woman, but the woman gets up and walks away, ignoring her. She then spots another man walking in the same direction as the woman she saw by the river and decides to follow them. She is led to a large field where multiple other strangers are gathered. A big wooden box sits in the middle of the field. One of the strangers attempts to pry the box open with a crowbar, but the others run away in fear of it being a trap. A trap. The box pops open and a little pig is seen running out of it. The man notices something else in the box, an armory. All the strangers run toward the box and arm themselves with guns, knives, and any other weapons they can get a hold of. One of them finds a key in the box too, the key that unlocks everybody's mouth restraints. They begin to wonder what they need the weapons for when a loud boom rings off in the distance. They realize it was the sound of rifle. A sudden onslaught of gunfire reigns over the group of strangers, killing two of them. One of the women running away from the gunfire falls into a hidden pit in the ground filled with iron spikes. She calls for help and a man quickly comes to her rescue. Removing her from the spikes, he attempts to carry her to safety, only to step on a landmine, killing both of them in an explosion. One of the strangers, a man, manages to get away unscathed. He runs through the woods frantically until he meets a fence. A group of a few others who manage to escape quickly gather at the fence. They begin to devise a means of escape. One of the survivors believes he can explain what is happening, referring to it as Manor Gate. While trying to get over the fence, the group is attacked by a swarm of arrows. One man stays back to fight off the attackers, while the rest successfully manage to get away. The three remaining survivors run to find shelter. They run along a road until they discover a gas station. The shopkeepers in the gas station, an elderly couple, are frightened at the sight of the group as they have guns and believe they are there to rob the store. The survivors demand to know what's happening to them and where they are. Shopkeepers say they are in Arkansas. The survivors explain to the shopkeepers that they are being hunted and that the guns are only to defend themselves. Using one of the shopkeeper's cell phones, I can't Google it right now. Listen to me, okay? one of the survivors calls the police. He tells them about the massacre in the woods and blames Mattergate. But the police say they have trouble understanding him over the phone. They eventually say they'll trace his location and they'll be on their way, and he hangs up the phone. One of the three survivors suddenly has a reaction to some donuts she ate off the shelf in the store, collapsing to the floor, seizing and frothing at the mouth. They look back at the shopkeepers to find them suddenly wearing gas masks. They release toxic gas into the air and then shoot the survivors, killing all three. The shopkeepers hide the bodies and clean up the bloody mess. We got three of them. They radio back to the presumed leader and inform them that they killed the survivors. The leader tells the shopkeepers that there is another survivor on their way to the shop. Soon after, the survivor arrives. She asks for a pack of cigarettes and what states she's in. They give her the cigarettes and tell her she's in Arkansas. Noticing something suspicious in the behavior of the shopkeepers, the woman jumps over the counter and kills the two shopkeepers with the shotgun hidden behind the counter. Leaving the store, she notices a car parked nearby with an Arkansas number plate. She pulls at it and it easily comes off, revealing that they aren't actually in Arkansas. She also notices that the car itself is rigged with a bomb so that it cannot be opened safely. She decides to camp outside the gas station, listening over the walkie-talkie she stole from the shopkeepers to the conversation between their leader and another voice. The voices over the walkie-talkie refer to the woman as Snowball. All of a sudden, she notices a drone, presumably controlled by Mannergate, sent to investigate the deaths of the shopkeepers. The drone is shot down by a man with an assault rifle. 
The man is about to open the nearby car, which would explode upon being opened, but the woman calls out to him, saving his life. He introduces himself as Gary. The woman is curious as to where some train tracks that she saw earlier might lead, so together they leave the gas station and follow the train tracks. While they're following the train tracks, Gary explains to her the story of how a group of rich elitists called Manorgate kidnaps innocent people and hunts them for sport. A train suddenly comes up from behind them on the tracks. They manage to jump inside one of the train carts while it's moving. In the train, they meet a family of immigrants, but Gary believes it's a trap, that the immigrants are actors working for Manorgate. Gary threatens to shoot them, but the train comes to a sudden stop. The train has been stopped at a military outpost. One of the immigrants reveals themselves to Gary as an actor, but he tells Gary that the other immigrants are real, as are the soldiers, and that the train was never meant to be stopped. Gary tackles the man and finds a grenade on him, pulling the pin and shoving it down the man's pants, blowing his body to pieces. Gary and the woman are then taken to be questioned by the soldiers. Noticing the soldiers' prominent Slavic accents, the woman's suspicions about not actually being in Arkansas are once again confirmed. The soldiers mockingly ask her if she too is being hunted and reveal that they found another survivor who claimed to be hunted, a man by the name of Don. Don and the woman are talking outside the outpost and he says he was heading north when the soldiers found him and he was relieved as he would rather be captured by the military than Manorgate. He wonders why the elitists gave them weapons if they simply wanted to kill him. Dawn asks the woman if she knows why the elitists are even trying to kill them. She says she doesn't care. She simply knows that they're wanted dead. Dawn and the woman receive help from a man who claims to work for the American government. The three of them leave the military outpost in his car. The man asks Gary and the woman what they've done, but they are confused. The man explains that every person collected by Manorgate to be killed must have done something because they chose to murder them for a reason. While driving, the woman, for seemingly no reason, turns and kicks the man out of the moving car, then reverses over him, crushing him to death beneath the wheels. Dawn is horrified by the actions of the woman, but quickly understands she made the right call when they find Gary, laying in the trunk, brutally murdered, confirming the woman's suspicion of the man working with the manor. They also find a map, revealing where the man was going to take them. Dawn suggests that since they now have a car, they should just escape. A pig all of a sudden emerges from the woods, which gives the woman an idea. The group of elitists are shown conversing in an underground bunker, preparing to kill Dawn and the woman, still expecting them to be brought back from the military outpost by the man pretending to be a government official. Does it need Martin Seaman? Okay. Oh, Richard. Guys. One of the elitists leaves the bunker to relieve himself in the woods, but is ambushed by Dawn and the woman, who slit his throat. Noticing the strange noises coming from above the bunker, the elitists grow suspicious and afraid and prepare to fight off an intruder. As a distraction, Dawn lets the pig down into the bunker. The elitists shoot the pig to death in a panic. Thinking it was only the pig making all the noise, they let their guard down. When suddenly, the woman appears and shoots one of the elitists in the head. The chaotic shootout ensues. She manages to take out the entire group without the help of Dawn. Just Dawn and the woman alone now. Someone suddenly radios Dawn to ask if he got the woman and says he can stop pretending to be on her side. Dawn says he has no idea what the woman on the radio is talking about and that she's lying. Unsure of what to believe, the woman tells Dawn to drop his gun. When he doesn't, she kills him. She then finds one of the elitists still clinging onto life and asks him where to find the woman on the radio. He tells her where the manor is. Obviously, seeing her as a capable fighter, the man asks her if she was in the military. She says she was in Afghanistan during the war. He says he was too. She thanks him for his service, then kills him. In a flashback to one year prior, a woman named Athena is presented as the CEO of a big-time company. She is confronted about a group chat text thread that has been leaked involving her and other members of her team talking about Manorgate. She is told she is being fired, that the others in the group chat have either been fired too or demoted, but she says the texts aren't real and that she was only joking about the matter. 
Unable to salvage their careers, Athena and the other members of her team are determined to find the people who accused her of running Manorgate. That is how she chose her victim, kidnapping conspiracy theorists who accused her of hunting humans as sport. People believe I'm hunting human beings. Back to the present day, the woman who took out the bunker of elitists is shown approaching Athena's manor. A voice through an intercom in front of the house presents her with two choices, to leave her gun outside in the mailbox or be blown up by a bomb directly beneath her. She complies and is let into the manor. Inside, the woman sees pictures on the wall of all the victims of Manorgate, including a picture of herself. She encounters Athena in the kitchen. Athena asks the woman if she knows who she is, but she doesn't. Athena says she knows who the woman is and talks about her life and backstory. The woman's name is Crystal May Creasy, born in Mississippi, White's Crossing. She dropped out of school at 12 years old when her father was killed by police during the raid of his meth lab. Her mother died soon after too, in an overdose. Athena confronts Crystal about her accusatory comments online that caused her to lose her job, talking about the manor and the leaked text messages. Crystal explains to Athena that she has the wrong Crystal, that there is another girl in her town who has the same name as her, and that she sometimes gets her mail. She says, too, that her parents are still alive, and she can call them if she wants to prove it. Athena doesn't believe her. Crystal quickly grabs a kitchen knife and attacks Athena. They get into a chaotic shuffle. Athena manages to grab a gun and shoot at Crystal, but she misses. She chases after Crystal and they fight again. Eventually, Athena stabs Crystal in the shoulder and is about to kill her when Crystal grabs her in the stomach. They both fall to the floor and lay dying side by side. Crystal asks Athena why she referred to her as Snowball over the walkie-talkie. Athena explains that it's a reference to George Orwell's Animal Farm, an old book. Crystal says she knows about the book, but wants to know why she was Snowball. When Snowball was a good character who was made to seem bad by everybody who made up lies about them, she says Athena should have been Snowball. With her dying breaths, Athena asks Crystal if she truly was the wrong Crystal, if it really wasn't her who made those comments online, and that there was no point in lying about it since they were both going to die. Crystal says no, it wasn't her. Moments later, Athena is dead. Crystal gets up from the floor, dresses her wounds, and puts on clean clothes. Just beyond the manor, she finds the plane belonging to Athena that she used to transport her victims. She boards the plane to find the pilot and a stewardess on board. She calmly informs them that she has killed the people who they work for, and now would like to go home.